Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good morning, how are you? Good. Happy t it's Tuesday today. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Wednesday. God, long weekend ahead of us. Anyway, so we're going to do a video conversation basically on what buyers should kind of be heads up on when buying, right? Yeah. Buyer beware. You know, what, what, hang on one second. I want to get my title out of it. Or buyer Here's mistakes it. or red flags of buying or. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's lots, right? There, there's lots. I mean, I mean I'm, of course, I can't find it now. Uh, yeah, there's lots of them, and that and that came from a that came from a, a suggestion from from a viewer, which I think you know what, hey, that was good. We did one on the selling, and I think we should do one on the buying. There's you know the the market is so many changes in the market. We're seeing inventory ballooning up. We're seeing sales decreasing. There's there's you know lots of things, lots of moving pieces, and I really think an agent that's engaged in the business full time um, is better to represent someone that is not full-time in the business and how many times have we've heard from you know again i've had things from viewers reach out comments oh we went with this agent because it was recommended by a friend oh but they're part-time i don't i'm not big on part-time agents because you get part-time results and they're not engaged in the market and fully invested in this business well i and, think and there's a couple of big things one is um I did try to do this part-time for the first couple of years and it was very difficult. You're not in it. Like I had to quit my job and just yep. jump in because um, you just don't know, like when you're working and driving to work and you're gone 10 hours a day and you know, you can't just be engaged like we are um, in exactly what's going on and how fast things change all the time. Yeah. Yep. And the other big thing right now is the new Tressa rules and the self-representation. Yeah, there's a few things. I don't really think they're as big as, you know, I think, you know, we, we know we've talked about this before with the double ending and all that. And then, you know, um, people are still doing it. And yeah, I Lots think of people are. Well, yeah, that was a discussion I had with someone yesterday, too is the agent did uh, discuss double ending and he would reduce his commission and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the only way you can really do that now is if the other person is self-represented. Yeah. Which I mean, means that, which means that I, as the other agent can't even give you comparables and I can't, I can't give you any information. You're totally on your own. So right. like when you're buying, you need representation and you need someone that's going to protect you because, sorry, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, this is people's most important and biggest investment normally. It, it, it is. And, 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 you know, how many times have we said it? Go interview three people on the selling side. Go interview three people on the buying side. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, I'm looking to, to buy a property in Barry. You know what? What kind of services do you offer? Get get to understand, build that relationship, and do some do some research. I, I think it's key. And I think how many times have we seen people get hurt, in, whether they're buying or selling, because they've used a friend of a friend? Yeah. Well, look, look yeah, but look at the one that uh, down at the Friday Harbor where the guy was only showing his own listings. Right. Big mis So there goes the prospective client that felt, wow, why isn't he showing me this one? I like it, but why isn't he showing it? Because he, you know, which because is wrong. Because he, he doesn't make double the commission. Right, right. Like, it's not all about the money. And I think a lot of times, too, when people are buying, they use their emotions more. They get mm -hmm. caught up with, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. And sometimes they overpay. Now, I always tell my buyers, if you're in this for the long haul, if this is your family home, that you envision for the next 20 years, if you pay 20,000 more than yeah. I think you should, it's okay though. Like if you love it and we've seen 50 houses and this is it and you got to do it and you can't, and you're negotiating and negotiating, you can't get down. You've done it yourself. Well, Even well, with that, ah. with that townhouse, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit higher than what you think. But if they're in it for the long haul and they love it and they want it, you know. Right. And that's the thing, right? Folks like the like the the area was a win. It was the area that was 
very attracted to them being a new build, you know, there, but there was what I, what I learned on that, that deal. Cause you know, we mainly do resale properties. This was a brand new build. Yes. It was, you know, the seller has resale, closed. Yeah. It, it becomes resale, but there's lots of, there's so much I've learned from doing that transaction in a sense with, you know, the PDI and it's a pre-delivery inspection what things are in the home that need to be done by the builder at a certain date, your 30 day, your yearly. Um, so those are things that, you know, how to get into the agreement of purchase and sale, navigating that, working with the builder to say, hey, when are these getting done, et cetera, just because there's more moving pieces to that type of property. Holy cow, you know? And so anyway, long story short, it, it was great learning. And, you know, my seller was happy. Um, we had great, you know, response from the builder doing that deal with the PDI issues, he exceeded our expectations. Well, and, and as a buying agent, because I was a buying agent. Remember when I first started, I was with that uh, with that team and I just did buying. That's all I did. You have to understand and, re and, and as a buyer, you have to think about what the long-term goal is. Is this a starter home? Am I only going to be here two to five years? Is this a 20 year home? You know, it makes a big flip in difference when you're buying what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you have to be more careful and yep. you have to really look at comparables and really make sure you're not, you know, getting in over your head or overpaying. If this is a starter home and I'm going to have a kid, like I had one young buyer a couple of years ago. And they want, we're looking at a one bedroom condo. And I said, Hey, you guys, listen, I don't know what the market's going to do. They're like 27, 28. Maybe you should get a two bedroom. What if you had a kid? Right. Yeah. If you have a kid, you now got to sell and yeah. lose money. Do you know what I mean? Because you have to get out. Yep. So they, they did uh, listen to my advice and get a two bedroom. Yeah, makes because sense. if the market's in a slow spot, you got to be able to hold. Well, we're in a slow spot now. So yeah, people got to hold today. And let's go back to, to what you talked about with the comparables. So that, 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 that touched the nerve with me where if someone's buying and with, you know, with an abundance of agents out there today, you know, we've seen a real growth in our industry come the COVID times where we got so many people entered the business and made all kinds of money, but it was easy. It was easy money for them. They didn't really, you know, nothing was, the market didn't matter. Any any fluctuations or the market dynamics didn't matter. It was just going full steam ahead. So, you know, when I seen listings coming in on some properties that I sold and I went, didn't they look at the comps? You know how many times I say that all the time? We're getting a real low ball, stupid offer and going, why didn't the agent pull up that sold that sold two weeks ago? So why, why do you think that happens? Why do you think it's important to show a buyer comparables? There's well, for one thing, just like I was saying, you don't want to overpay. You don't want to, you, you don't want it's them probably. already behind the eight ball before they even start. And sure. second of all, um, for financing, the appraisal has to come through, Mark. 100%. Yep. Yep. And if they're only, especially if they're first time or only putting 5% down, which they can, yep. if that appraisal short, they got to make up the difference in money. And they probably Perfect. don't have it. So Perfect. like those are the two biggies. The value Perfect. has to be there. Valuation has to come in, right? And that's the thing, especially in this market, we're seeing all kinds of different pricing strategies. We're seeing some price for the market. We're seeing an abundance of inventory, not price for the market. And that inventory is sitting as we've covered many times. So comparables are very important. I, I also think that today's buyers should get them self-educated too not just solely rely on the real estate professional. I think it's it's nice when we get clients that are, holy cow, that client's really in tune with things. They know what's going on. That's important. They need to watch the market. They need to look at what's being listed. Look what's being sold today. Have an understanding of it. Well, it, I think it helps because even if we're telling them something and we can give all the, okay, yesterday I was going through comparables with somebody sold, Mark. And he was giving me high ones and I was giving him low ones. And I said to him, listen, I've told many clients in the past for every high one you can find, I can find a low one. Well, that's it. You know, and looking at those solds and comparing them to property to property, apples to apples, sometimes they're not. Upgrades, bigger space, better finishes, finished basement, 
great location. You know, we've seen how many times have we seen comparables come in and listings from an agent going, well, we're offered 450 because a comparable on the other side of town sold for 450. To me, that's a red flag that does an inexperienced agent right there. Well, right? a lot of out of town agents don't know the different areas. Like in Barrie, you can go to Innishore and then uh, my area and almost the same house is like $200,000 difference. Right, right, right. And that's important. And I don't know if you want to pull it up on the screen, but I also think buyers should look and we've gone done videos on, you know, the crime map of Barrie. Not too many people ask about that to us. We know the areas. We haven't done a video in the past six months on that, but we kind of know the basic areas to stay away from based on data from Barry Police Services. How many people do you think today are looking at crime maps and are fully understanding what is going on in the neighborhood? Oh, like, n n well, none from Toronto. None from Toronto. They probably they don't even know how to get there. So they they think down by the waterfront's a really good investment, right? Or by the college. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a great investment. I, I have all kinds of people, uh, you know, especially when I was a buyer agent, and you're getting all these uh, buyer leads, and and they're all, oh, we want to be near the college because you know the college and the hospital, that's the best place. Blah blah blah. You know, everything's there. That's yeah. that that that. Well, it's one of the worst. It's not great. And the values are lower there. Values are, value bases are lower. Did you want to pull up, do a screen share? We don't want to go through the crime map, but maybe just, I think this is important for buyers to, the, to use this tool. And so we're, this video is about them and how to help them. So why don't we just pull it up, dot, dot, dot. And then, you know what, maybe you can navigate something if you want. Well, no. I think it's important because buyers, you should be really looking at this and watch what Diane's typing in here. It's important. Very good services, isn't it? Yep. Oh, it was right there. We had it. There we go. I think it's right down. Interactive crime mapping tool. There we go. Hit that, folks. This is a great tool and maybe just go through one area if you want Dan talk about it if you want or I have to yeah agree to a disclaimer here so the way this works is you can pick the different crimes you want when yeah. you when you look at it originally um where's my little dewey here Where's the map? Prime map right above. Okay. So you have all these different crimes here. Yep. And it shows like assaults 191, bail violations 155, beach, breach of probation. So all these little things, you can pick what yep. ward you want. And what's a ward? So explain ward one. Ward is like a there's five there's ten wards in Barrie, and the wards are like the voting board wards. So it's each little geographical area. Yeah. And um, Mark, they changed this thing, eh? A little bit. Yeah, I think it's a little bit easier. I think it's it's great by that this way. So we zoned in on ward ward one, and then you can cut those red dots are. All right, so we can, that's probably for the last 60 days. So in that ward one area, so someone's looking for home in Codrington, Wellington area, the, 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 the issues will come up. This so is this great... is ward two, which is downtown area. Yep. So what are some of the issues in downtown in the last 60 days? Well, they're not coming up. Only coming Saying up. Like... Assault 60, bail violations, 59, break and enter 30. Yep. Flight from police officer to mischief 46, robbery three, theft 73. Yep. So let me try me. All right. So you can see folks where it gives a really good break. So here we, we get down to like mischief seven. Yep. 
break and enter seven. Yep. See what I mean? Yep. It goes down huge. So then um, this is like the Innisdale area. Yep. Assaults 10, break and enters two. S see what I mean? Like it gets, it, you can see way, the numbers are way, way, way down from what it was over in the different areas. In the different in the downtown core, see right. Ward Two. Look at the numbers: sixty, yep. fifty nine, fifty seven, mischief yep. forty six. Yep. Offensive we weapons seventeen. Yep. So then, when you go to mine, the offensive weapons one. Yep. And then when we go to Inishore, is that Inishore? That's Painswick, I think. Is it? Well, there's South Shore right there in Tollendale, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Uh, there you go. Yep. So the offensive weapons here is two. Yeah, and Tollendale it's it's a big area in that in that area too. Yeah. But does it? So, do, does, yeah, this is? helps a lot. Well, and when you're buying and you're you know you're raising kids, and this is another thing. This is what I mean about about discussing no, what your goal is if yeah. i want an investment property where am i going to go i i always i never go to the north end because you know why because of the amount of rentals you know but I, if always you, I have a client with a student rental well then you can go up there but if, if it that's what on, i mean it depends yeah. on what what you're looking for and what your goals are yeah and like if you're doing a student you know want to do a student rental Yep. Forget the South End. It's not going to work. Yeah, right, right. No, that's not most of these to... kids don't have a car. You want right. walking distance, right? But it depends on each individuals. What other things can we 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 talk about for a buyer to educate them? We talked about a crime map. We talked how important it is to know the market. Um, home inspections. The, home inspections are, are are important in in, in today's market and walkthroughs, which. Yeah, let's touch that. Let, let's that's a real important inspection. Conditions are normal in, in in today's world because the market is to me is flooded with inventory. So, you know, condition it up a little bit. Make sure you're you're well looked after, right? From inspection. Yeah. Right. And and don't get your your buddy's a great worker and under understands things. No, you need to get a licensed home inspector with a good reputation. That yes. Knows the insides and outsides of a house. And a couple of years ago, I mean, when everything was going crazy, everybody was buying firm and they were waiving their home inspections. Yeah. And now I hear a lot of horror stories. Well, we didn't get an inspection and we didn't know. It just happened to my, the one in Angus I sold. The furnace. Well, yeah, that because we were in bidding wars yeah. and the house was relatively new, so they didn't bother. Sure. And honestly, everything was good except the furnace exhaust wasn't attached yep. to the to the outside pipe. Like it wasn't even attached. So all the condensation and hot air was going up yep. behind the uh, siding and it rotted out a big portion of the uh yep. the wood. Absolutely. And and that's the thing, right? Even new builds, as as you know, a couple of weeks ago we, we finished off a deal and, and we did home inspection on that with Jeremy. It was just good. It was good information for the new homeowner to really get educated on the workings of a house. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and because I'm telling you, me and you both bought new builds and they, they're not fun experiences. I tell you, there's lots and lots of deficiencies and lots of poor workmanship. It is unbelievable. We have a gazillion of them up here. I was upstairs in my, after my workout, I, I walked, I was doing stairs last night. So I went up to the, my balcony. And I, for, as soon as I step on it, I, I knew it was there, but it, there was a, the flooring has gone down on this, this ramp flooring. And the, so someone's going to twist an ankle. Like, why are we letting people walk on that? Why are we, why, you know what I mean? There's not, this is brand new, maybe six yeah. weeks old. So it's really important. Um, some other things you kind of want to think about? The walkthrough. Walkthrough. Yeah, sorry. I, I got off topic. So that's an important thing is walkthroughs. And as we mentioned in previous videos, we don't see them being done by other town agents. They don't you want to drive up here. Want to drive up here. I really believe if you're using an out of town agent, you need to make them earn their paycheck and they need to come up and do a final walkthrough. How many times have we seen deficiencies, things not done, 
whether it's a tenant issue, whether the washing machine blows up, whether there's holes in the carpet now, big whatever, there's always there's things that could easily pop up and they're leaving the buyers holding the bag. Because once that deal closes, Diane, good you're luck. Getting money. Money. You're getting nothing. Nothing. Here, you, no, you're going to get this. Okay, we'll send a letter over to the other side. That's it. And nothing gets done. Tell yeah. the lawyer not to do it. I'm going to charge you because nothing's getting done. So that's a big thing. The final walkthroughs. Hey, we need, because then look how many deficiencies and, and questions that come up from some are good. Some aren't good. But well, it, gives- it drives me. Yeah, I know. And it drives me crazy that that because I've done buys where I've had people that um, are my clients and I and they've used me for years and they bought in Sudbury with, and I bought with them. They didn't trust. They met somebody up there, didn't like them, didn't trust them. So I did all the comparables and everything. Anyway, long story short, when they had to do a final walkthrough, I drove three and a half hours and did it. And you should. Like the buying agent makes more money in general than the listing agent. Yeah, and you're representing your clients in a good way. You're protecting them. And they're making lots of money doing this. It shouldn't be um, something that, you know, they don't want to drive an hour. Like you're making 20, 25,000. 15,000 and you can't drive for one hour and do a walkthrough. I know. I know. It's unbelievable. And that's a top. That's why I'm really big on working with, with, you know, reputable agents in the community versus out of town agents. Okay. Mark, I'll tell you what the problem is too, though. (laughs) And I think it's with any, not with anybody, but with a lot of people, when you meet them, and you start looking, the possibility that they're going to make $20,000 off you, they're great. They're yeah. your best friend. Yeah. They're doing everything you want. They're bringing you into all this house. As soon as the deal is done yeah. and they and it's firm, yeah. and I see it with agents all the time. Yeah. You know all the problems I had in uh, Clearview? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to reach the other agent. Yeah, you can't get a hold of them. They don't even answer me. And the deal isn't closed. We have issues, water, septics, all this shit. And she's answering nothing. Because the deal's firm now. She's made her money. Yep. Yep. And my client says to me, she goes, Diane, I can't believe that you're going over and above and going crazy here. Trying to, I'm phoning the township for them. Okay. I'm getting an AC guy. I like, and she goes, and this woman won't even answer. Yeah, well, I know. That's it. And this is the representation that to me, people sometimes settle for, or they get the recommendation from a friend, right? Oh, so-and-so um, recommended them. Oh, Jesus Christ. Find out more about them. Yeah, but they're always great at the beginning. They are. They are. I know. Because because the, because that's, I mean, most real estate agents, like we're personable people. If you're in this business at all, normally you're not, you know what I mean? Like you're comfortable with people, especially if you have some experience. So you can sit there and talk a good game. Like, you know what I mean? People get fooled into all oh, these, you know, this person's really looking after me in this per. you know what I mean? Yep. And yep. then, and then once the flipping thing is firm. Yep. See I... No walkthroughs can't get a hold. And that's the thing. So you just trigger something. That's the thing. Once the deal is closed, people stop communicating. But a new buyer that is buying for the first time, I find post deal done, there's more work to be done (laughs) because they have a lot of questions. Hey, Mark, do you know anyone that could do some lights for me? Sure do. Okay. Hey, Mark, do you know an electrician? Yep. I want to do this. Do you know a carpenter? Yep. Can you do a walkthrough with them? I want to do this. Yep. It's extensive. Right? Oh, it's, it's, oh, and Mark, how about. It's a good um, thing though. Yes. You want to help them. Yes. Well, you, you forge a relationship, you, you forge Google. a relationship with these people. 100%. You now have a relationship, right? And I, that's what all my clients say. Yeah. Diane's got a guy. Cause, cause they'll ask me something. Yeah. I got a guy. I got a guy. And then something they'll ask me about something else. Yeah, I got a guy. Um, how many times have you been called and um, asked? So, so uh, when was the house built? Um, is there a, a 
uh, clean out for the, uh, what's that called? For the, you know, the sewer drain right. thing when you have that, what's it called? A backup valve thing, you know, the backup thing. Yeah. Uh, what's the amperage in the, in the, in, in the, in the, what do you call it? the fuse box? Yeah. Because when they get home insurance. Right. All these questions come up. There's a huge list. When were the shingles done? Diane, when was the house built? Diane, yep. Like. Yep. There's a lot a of after service part of the transaction. And I think that's a, some good points that buyers need to consider that right and work with people that offer those services beyond the paperwork right because i just did it for another agent with the cleaner well, the toronto sure. agent and i'm the buying agent on a lease it's not yeah. even my listing and i had to find the cleaner for them yeah well there's the thing because they don't know even locally so they're going to rely on that so there's lots of there's lots of positives to work with local agents i know i'm kind of harm i mean promoting that and I'm not trying to promote us, but I'm trying to promote that pick pick a few, interview a few. And Work make sure you. and make sure that the person knows the market. Like I bought in Hamilton two or three times, Mark, and I know Hamilton pretty bloody good now, only because I got educated on it. But what I mean is if you are going to use somebody that's a relative, I get that all the time too make yeah. sure they're at least doing all their homework. They can go on Trebmark. They can find out. All the information's there. Why don't you show, why don't you show the viewers kind of what, how we gauge the market a bit with our, with our spreadsheets and numbers and we keep a track record of things because then it keeps us in tune with the market. So what Dan's going to pull up is a spreadsheet. So these are, you know, we do updates twice a month with things. So we, we break it down by category, by price point, by solds, listings, so when we have someone, um, no, oh, I can't navigate it. You could navigate it. I don't know. Go to go, go any month, July, whatever, and saying, hey, I'm looking for a house between six and seven. What's the inventory like? Here we go. Six to seven. Again, this was from July 15th. So we, we updated, you know, end of the month, we'll update the numbers. But here we go. Here's all the souls in the month of from July 1st, to July 15th. Here's the inventory numbers. So seven, eight. Oh, there's a ton of inventory. It's, it's not much is selling in that category. You got lots of choice. Let me go through the top five for you. And then we can hop on a zoom. We can go through the listings together. So this is important data. This yes. is really important data that we love to share because it should be shared. We, we, we take the time to, to extrapolate it, put it in spreadsheets so we can communicate it. So we know well, yeah. what, the other thing is on the listing side, how many are not selling? <laughs> well, look at the numbers. Like look like 21% for again, our transactions are down double digits throughout the that's normal. That's normal in what we're seeing. So, you know, and then you know, my question is again, I really believe the pricing in this marketplace is wrong. Most of well, it look is at wrong. this mark today. We have seven new listings only. Yeah. And it's normal. We're coming to a long weekend. Pretty normal to see as we progress. And the and these these are all actually Barry, right? One in Innisfil, but that's the thing. So, but look at the price ranges. Yeah, well, it's normal. Bit of high price, low price. One. They're all but, well, no, mostly all high though. Nine nine nine, a million nine, one three nine nine, one seven nine four, nine nine eight. Right. So a buyer can be looking at our numbers can say, oh, so only 12% of, of the listings are selling in this price range. Why is that? Well, let me go show you why, right? It kind yeah. of puts you in a better position of understanding the market to negotiate. And let me tell you, there's a lot of sellers out there, folks, that think we're still in a market of demand right now. And we're not. And we're not. We're not. The buyers have... Control and sellers are having a hard time letting that grip go. Anyway. Um, and you definitely have uh, negotiation power for sure. You do. You should if there's a serious seller that wants to sell. But there's lots of that, that dig their heels in and you have to move on. You but can't listen, listen, people, you're not getting $100,000 off a, a 900000 No, 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 no. We're not saying that. 
we're, you know, prices are off last year, one to two percent, a bit more in higher ranges, but inventory is is climbing. So it'll be interesting to see the July numbers in a few days to see how far they're off last year's. I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see the fall market. I think could be the big one where the Fed's, you know, take a fifty basis point cut. I think the market could get a little bit excited. Yeah. Then seeing it so if anyone has any questions on the barry real estate market for simple county reach out to dan and myself i hope this video serves you well and subscribe for uh more notifications hit the subscribe button got questions leave a comment perfect okay see you see ya